SK Hynix, a company that you guys may or may not be familiar with, but if you've worked in the business sector, education sector, or on the back side of things, well, you'd, you'd know about SK Hynix. They make the RAM chips and certain things and SSDs and drives and memory that go in computers that companies like HP, Asus, Dell, all them use. That means that they make their own stuff and here they are now going to be releasing a product out to consumers. Now, they sort of dabbled with consumer product releases in the past, but now they're back and they're gonna come out here with an SSD. We're gonna be checking out the SK Hynix Gold S31 one terabyte SSD. Stay with me. My name is Chris, this is Coalition Gaming, and today I'll be your computer technician. So if you like tech, hardware, gaming, tutorials, news, reviews, and all that sort of stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on. We always got more videos coming. We'd really appreciate it. So SK Hynix, again, is a company that has been making stuff sort of like in the background, so to speak. And uh, yeah, so they make their own stuff. They have their own fabs. And uh, with all that being said, this drive uses their own controller with their own NAND flash modules. But one of the cooler things on it is that it also has DRAM. So because it has a DRAM cache, it means that this isn't exactly a budget drive. DRAMless drives will run out of steam real quick when you're doing large sequential reads and writes. Whereas the DRAM cache on, on this will help speed things up that only come in bursts. With that being said, this is a 3D TLC drive. It has a 600 terabyte written endurance capacity and that will go down with the smaller drive. So this is for the one terabyte. The, I believe the 500 has less than that and the 240 has less than that. But that's sort of the general thing when it comes to SSDs. The, the larger, the better when it comes to endurance and write speeds and read speeds and all that. Now this uses SK Hynix's own fourth gen uh, SSD controller. This, I guess they called it Quartz is what they're going to be calling it on that one. So uh, considering that SK Hynix has been putting SSDs much like this in, uh, in computers already, it's pretty trusted platform as far as I'm concerned. So the advertised read speeds are at 560 megabytes a second and the advertised write speeds are at 525 megabytes a second. This is par for the course nowadays when it comes to serial ATA SSDs, you're pretty much hitting the limit of the bus. This also comes with a five year warranty, which is actually really nice. Five years is a good long time for an SSD warranty. And given the right endurance of the drive, you probably will go a lot longer than this unless you're an extreme user moving huge amounts of data back and forth on it. So yeah, solid warranty, I'll give it that. So let's get into a couple of quick benchmarks on it. So let's unbox this thing and see what's all inside. There we go, there's the box. It's just a basic black box here, but you know what, I kind of like this versus like blister packaging. You see some SSDs come in. This is actually kind of nice. Let's open it all up. And you can see the SSD in there. I mean, this should be all that's in there in all honesty. But uh, let's get that guy out, come on. There we go. So it's an anti-static bag. Let's open that up. And we get a silver SK Hynix SSD with its label. Now, coming from the background that I work in, I see SK Hynix SSDs that look like this in like uh, uh, business laptops and certain things we use in the education sector. So uh, it wouldn't surprise me if this was just a rebadged unit from you know, maybe just tweaked slightly compared to what's inside the uh, OEM stuff that they use. But uh, hey, if it works, it works, right? They don't have to retool or do anything different. Just slap some different stickers on and away you go. And oh, look, we do have something else in here. Instructions, right? Terms and conditions, probably for the warranty. Instructions in multiple languages, but who needs these, right? There you go. Let's, uh, let's get to the benchmarks on these, yeah? One thing real quick is that the drive comes unformatted. So if you plug it into your computer, you may not see anything. So you need to go into disk management, format it, give it a drive letter, and then you'll be good to go.
So as you guys can see, this sort of falls right where a serial ATA SSD should fall. It's relatively close to the advertised speed, so that's good. And uh, the DRAM though did come in handy. As you saw in one of the transfers there, um, we hit, I moved the 26 gig game folder Apex Legends from one SSD to this SSD. And there are moments of over one gigabyte per second transfer speed on that, which is super nice. Clearly the serial ATA bus can't do that. So what what's happening is it's going from cache to cache essentially. The cache on the drive is doing its thing. And then once that sort of ran out, uh, it went back to 400 to 500 megabytes a second, which is right in line as far as the serial, a, a serial ATA SSD is concerned. So let's talk pricing. The one terabyte is at $123.99, the 500 gig is at uh, $77.99, and the 250 gig is at $49.99. These numbers aren't exactly impressive. The one terabyte would need about a 20 bucks knocked off to be competitive. And then the 500 gig would need probably another also like 10 to $15 knocked off to be competitive because you can start getting the 500 gigs at around 50 bucks and you can get 250 to 40 gigs at around 30 bucks. Whereas this one is $20 more on the bottom end. So yeah, taking $20 off the top on each of those prices would make it competitive, but that isn't anything like uh, sales could solve or a discount code or something like that. Plenty of times you see something at an MSRP, but it never sells at that. It sells at lower cost than that. So I guess it remains to be seen what it ends up stabilizing in at, at the on the market. But either way, throw a sale on there and it becomes competitive with everything else. So you might be asking yourself, why get a serial ATA SSD in this day and age over an M.2 SSD? And realistically, the answer is if you're gonna be using it in a laptop, if you're gonna be using it in a computer that doesn't support booting off of NVMe or doesn't have M.2, um, legacy systems or just older gen systems, or for the simple fact that it's relatively universal and easy to use. So that is definitely a benefit that um, that these have over M.2 SSDs. M.2 SSDs did come down in price, so the old excuse of those costing more is relatively no more. However, I mean, this this drive, you can take it out and put it in anything. You can use it as an external SSD with a certain dock, and uh, it's much more universal in use compared to an M.2. I know you can do that with an M.2, but that's when things start getting more expensive, and I know those are faster as well, so, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what SK Hynix brings as far as uh, NVMe SSDs because seeing some of this tech in that, uh, that would be something that's definitely interesting. And maybe they can come in with more competitively priced M.2 NVMe options and we'll see how that shakes up the market. So overall, this is a very solid SSD. My thing is that SK Hynix makes everything in-house for it, so that sort of puts them in the ranks of companies like Samsung and SanDisk because not a lot of companies out there that you see producing SSDs actually make the parts in them. They're just putting their labels on somebody else's parts. Whereas SK Hynix is they're just putting their own label on their own parts and there is something sort of intangible that, that about that that sort of raises the overall value of something like this. So definitely the price could use an adjustment, but it is definitely a good thing to see such an established OEM like SK Hynix re-entering the consumer market with some products like this. So if you found this video useful, helpful, informative, or anything like that, make sure you hit that thumbs, thumbs up button. Subscribe, we always got more coming. My name is Chris, this is, this is Coalition Gaming, and I've been your computer technician for today. We always got more coming. We stream every Thursday, 8 p.m. Make sure you follow us there. That's on Twitch and YouTube, and I think we're gonna be doing Mixer a little bit more now too, so make sure you check it all out. Links are all in the description below. If this product interests you, that will also be linked in the description below, and uh, make sure you guys check it all out. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. I'll take it. Mini boat. It's more of a mini boat with handles. Oh! <laughs> I, th I thought we were going slow enough. Oh, Wayne's gonna take all my shit now. <laughs> Wayne's just without even missing a beat.